Hey everyone, it's Cyrano, and today I'm doing a review of an MMO called Rift. It's been out for six months, in fact they're having a six monthly half-year birthday celebration right now. So I thought it would be time to finally do the review on it. And I've pretty much been playing it since release. What you see now is a Rift invasion. So what happens across the whole zone, Rifts open up, and an invasion of creatures just try and take over that map pretty much. You generally have to defend a spot, you defend it for the first phase, then you counter-attack for the second phase. And generally a lot of invasions follow this, this pattern. And they can get really involved. And right now it's the middle of the day so there's not many people online but still the group size tends to get to about 40 on this side. And since you do these rifts allied with the opposite faction, you can pretty much double the amount of players that are, that are there. So, right now, I might have 10 players here, but that's 20. And when these things start to get to sizes of 20 to, to 40 people in these in these groups on one faction doing it, and you know the other faction's got just as many there, they can, they can become very explosive, energetic things to be part of. And where most MMOs tend to have very empty very empty open worlds. Games like WoW where you might run into two or three people during the entire time while you're questing. In Rift, because of Rifts, you're always seeing other people and it's kind of refreshing. Now each single Rift here, this is an Earth Rift, has five or so phases and you've got to complete each one within a certain time to open up the next one. In each next one gets more and more difficult than the previous one. And generally, sometimes you might not be able to complete all five by yourself. Sometimes the last one can absolutely gut you, especially if you don't have self-healing. Self-healing seems to make soloing in this game much, much easier. Now, I've recorded the first couple of minutes here of an invasion, and it'll go to the final boss fight of the invasion. Um, generally this game plays a lot like another game called World of Warcraft and the main difference really is just the rifting which makes the game much more dynamic. Some people hate rifts because you know they just want to do their questing and the rifts get in the way. But I kind of like that. It mixes things up a bit. Now there's a lot to do in this game. You have questing you have rifts, PvP, dungeons, and you you actually can't do it all. While you're leveling up, you'll get experience for doing each of these things. And if you're doing rifts, if you're doing PvP while you're doing questing, you'll never complete all the quests in the zone before you have to go to the, go to the next one. And some people hate that. Some people think that's a letdown. Completionists will hate it. Um, but. I found that I leveled up at a generally pretty good pace. You can always go back and do all these things over again. So to me, I had no problems with the leveling speed. Now this here is the final battle, and each final battle in this rift invasion acts a particular way. They usually have two mechanics that involve like dodging, the fire on the ground and that sort of thing. Some will throw you. Some will put dots down. Generally, if you have an AoE healer who heals everyone in the group, like a bard, you'll generally be okay in these sort of things. They usually do require a tank, unless you have enough healers. As you can see, this one here teleports around as some sort of flare, ignoring threat and that sort of thing. And you also do that AoE Nova thing on the ground that you have to dodge. So, well, they're not as hard as any particular raid boss that you might have in Warcraft. You, you do have to think sometimes. Sometimes you can take massive damage if you're not dodging those hits. This guy here is going to take a little while to die because there's only 30 or so people attacking it. Sometimes there are 200 people here. So many people that your screen doesn't render them all. And if you move to another part, it just renders them. They can get really involved late in the game and you have to make sure that your internet connection is up to speed. Now, the game has a soul system, and you have four classes with nine souls, and you generally make your own character. 
with those souls. Instead of being forced to play a certain way with a certain class and being locked into that style, you can sort of tweak it up a bit. If you don't like a particular skill, you might go down another route with a different soul. So essentially you can make your character play the way you want. And if you want to spam one key off with a macro that does all your attacks so you can focus on your rate awareness, I mean, you can do that sort of thing. If you want maybe one, two or three keys, you can mix it up and make your character that way. So generally the game can be as simple as or as complex as you make it and how much you want to macro it. And you generally I play with one spam spam spammable attack key with a finishing move key and maybe an optional key and a few contextual skills depending on what happens I'll use those skills at that moment but generally for doing DPS you can reduce the game down to one attack key and that's sort of the way I like to play where I'm doing damage I want to focus on the game I don't want to jump through hoops just to do a bit of DPS I think games which focus on specific keys that you have to use at specific times are generally the better ones but that's just me and because of that you can tailor it to your playstyle. Now this here is the capital city of the Defiant side it's a very nice city your frame rate will take a hit here because of usually how many people are in the, in the city at once everything that you need is in this city there's no three or four different capitals that you have to worry about everything's in the one place. You've got your crafters, your PvP and your PvE reward givers here. Here we go, this is the crafting section. And in here are your rift rewards. If you do rifts, you get tokens, you hand those tokens in and you get planar essences which are sort of like gems in World of Warcraft. They just give you bonuses to whatever role you're trying to do. Now these here are artifacts. You'll see little shinies on the ground and you can collect them. You hand in the artifact collection when you've completed it and you get a pet pretty much for every 10 or so artifact collections that you hand in. There's also a mount there too. You have a wardrobe so you can set what uh, look you like. You have four different sets. You can colour your gear with dyes as well. You have your general rep grinds, mounts, companions, little pets on the ground, vanity pets, and there are a hell of a lot of titles, and you can have two titles running at once. There's a lot of currencies in this game, uh, but they don't take up backpack space, and you generally have pretty generic World of Warcraft type crafting system. you have two gathering professions and, and one crafting profession so you always have extra gear that you're picking up that you can sell on the auction house to other players but this also lends to cheaper prices on the auction house because it's almost oversaturated with everyone collecting things that they don't need that they'll never need it generally means there's a lot of crafting mats to go around so you, it can be hard to make money on the auction house in that way questing is pretty normal, you get your daily quests at max level, you go in and you pretty much just, pretty much just kill them, spam your, your attack key off, whatever you've macroed up, and it's just a normal questing affair. There's no real pushing of the storyline or anything like that. One thing though about dungeons is redoing a dungeon in hard mode doubles the amount of bosses in there and the storyline will can continue on in that dungeon. So normally you get to the halfway point, say you might have saved the dungeon, killed the final boss and saved the world. But in the hard mode, killing the final boss doesn't save the world and you have to go on and continue to fight a few other bosses for example. So the way the hard mode dungeons are very well done, one thing about this game is there's very few bugs, it's very complete and almost every month they keep bringing out new content now this here is the soul tree and as you can see you can have five different saves so I for example have a soloing spec I have a PvP spec a DPS spec and two tanking specs so 
you're just not limited. They just don't want to limit you in this game. This here is a water rift. Rift overall is a lot of fun, though I personally have had a lot of technical problems in the way of for some reason after one of the major patches the data was considered peer-to-peer -peer traffic and after 5 p.m. the game's lag just went to hell. They fixed it after a month but I already moved on to other games by that time and I know of other people who have also been having this problem not just with that patch but throughout the whole thing. So beware on that part. Also the game's visuals they look quite good though people tend to lose visual quality as they get further away and normally in some games you can still tell parts of their armor different parts of it at range but in this they tend to just turn into almost blobs in a way where like my character right now I can barely see any of that detail on my armor it's just I've turned into a red blob and the game only uses direct x9 with a lot of software anti-aliasing effects which really slow the game down so I really wish the engine was a bit better on this because there are other games that look better and run better but still it does a pretty good job just make sure that you definitely have an i7 or something similar in CPU otherwise you're really going to struggle another thing that's great about this is every time you die in the wilderness they sort of give you a do-over. Once per hour you get a do-over where you don't have to run back to the graveyard, so for that odd time where you might have just made a stuff up, it doesn't really penalise you too much there. This here is a PvP match. Generally, you have to get to a thousand points, you have 15 minutes or so to do it, and each of the control points give you different rewards. So controlling the codex for example is worth more than the other three. But if you have all of the other three and not the codex you'll still get more points. This is Cyrano and thanks for watching.